Hello, I'm Jennifer from the St. Louis County Library. Welcome to Resume Rescue. This series of videos will teach you how to create or improve your resume to aid in your job search. This video will focus on fine-tuning the content of your resume. To see the full playlist of all of the Resume Rescue videos, click on the link in the description. Here are some miscellaneous content tips. First of all, do not lie. Present yourself in the best possible light, but don't say anything that is not true. Write your resume in first person, but leave out the pronouns. So instead of saying something like, I led a sales team of 12 people, you would just say, led a sales team of 12 people. Use standard section headings. So your section headings are things like work experience, education, languages. Make sure you're using those common kinds of section headings because that's what the computer will be looking for. This is not the time to get fancy with a thesaurus. Don't use words with which you aren't familiar. You do want your resume to have a more formal tone than we would speak normally, but you don't want to use words that you don't know what they mean. The last thing you want to happen during a job interview is for them to ask you something about your resume and you don't know what they're talking about. Remember, it's about them, not about you. So your resume shouldn't be saying, here are all the things I can do. Your resume should be saying, here are all the things I can do for your company. Your resume is not an autobiography, so you should not include every job you've had ever. It should just be relevant work experience from the last 10 years. It is okay for your resume to be two pages. A lot of people think your resume needs to be one page. And if you've only ever had one job before, that's probably still the case. But if you've been in the workforce for more than five years, chances are you're probably gonna have a two page resume. And that's okay, but it shouldn't be any longer than two pages. And if it is two pages, make sure that all of the content has earned its place on your resume and isn't just there to fill up space. Now let's talk about references. Do not include references on your resume. And do not say references available upon request. This is another thing that might make your resume seem a little dated. And also, they're not waiting for your permission to ask for your references. They're probably going to ask for your references anyway, even if you don't include this sentence. But what you should do is have a separate document containing your references. That way, if you're going to an interview or a job fair, you can print it and hand it out. It just shouldn't be in the same document as your resume. Now let's talk about proofreading. You definitely want to make sure you proofread your resume before you send it out. So run spell check, but do not rely solely on spell check. Spell check isn't going to catch everything, and the things it does catch, it's only going to catch if you're close to the correct spelling. So make sure that you're proofreading it yourself as well. Better yet, have someone else proofread your resume particularly if you have a friend, family member, or colleague who is really good at proofreading, have them look it over and let you know what you need to work on. Sometimes when we've been working on something really hard, our brain sees what it's supposed to say, and we may not catch our own mistakes. So it's always good to have a fresh pair of eyes take a look at it. Read your resume out loud. This is a helpful tip whether you are doing the proofreading or someone else is doing the proofreading. You're gonna catch many more mistakes if you read your resume out loud than if you read it silently to yourself. Make sure you're not just looking for spelling errors. You should be looking for spelling, grammar, punctuation, and capitalization errors. The number one reason that HR managers throw away resumes is because there are proofreading mistakes. Some common mistakes to look for are homophones. 
So these are words that sound the same, but are spelled differently. Your and your, there, there, and there, its and its are some common examples. City and state listings. So when you list a city and state, it should be the name of the city, comma, the state. And the state should either be the entire word, or if it is a two-letter abbreviation, both letters are capitalized and there are no periods in between the letters. Make sure you capitalize all proper nouns. You're also going to want to be looking for consistency errors. Tense consistency. The job where you are currently working should be written in present tense and all other jobs should be written in past tense. This is a really easy mistake to make when you are updating a resume. A lot of people tend to just put the new experience on top and move all of their previous work experiences down. The trouble with that is, if you don't go back and reread those work experiences, you may have a couple of jobs written in present tense, but you no longer work there. So when you're updating your resume, don't just add new information. Make sure you go back and reread your entire resume. Method of listing your experiences. So when you're listing your work experience, if you put the job title first and then the name of the company in the first work experience, in the second work experience, you also need to put the job title first and then the name of the company. So any of those kinds of choices that you've made, make sure you're consistent with them throughout your resume. Method of listing dates. Now, there are a couple of places where you're going to be including dates on your resume, so make sure whatever method you choose to list them is the same in all of those places. You could choose just to list the year. Some employers will see that as you're trying to hide or obscure something, so in most cases I would recommend including the months as well. But if you include the months, how are you including the months? So let's say I'm talking about September 1st. Would you do 9 slash 1, 9 dash 1, SEPT period 1? Would you write out the whole word September? Whichever method you choose, make sure you are consistent throughout your entire resume. The amount of space between sections and work experiences. You want to make sure that you have a little bit of space in between each of your sections in between each of your work experiences. And how much space you include should be consistent throughout your resume. All of your formatting choices should also be consistent. So if you made one of your section headings bold, make sure all of your section headings are bold. And finally, make sure appropriate information is lined up. So anything that should be aligned to a margin Make sure it's lined up all the way down your page. And anything like a bulleted list, make sure all of your bullet points are lined up on the entire page. In the next video, we will talk about how to get your resume noticed by hiring managers. Thank you for watching. There is a link to the full Resume Rescue playlist in the description as well as a link to upcoming technology programs at the St. Louis County Library. Thank you for supporting the library. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel.